Telling a lie while standing in the truth, is that possible? Yes, we know that by now. Telling the truth by standing in the lie, is that possible? Of course, also, yes. As you can see, dear beloved, this study is quite simple. But it's still very important to lay down these foundational principles. So that's why I'm doing it. Welcome to this video and we will continue our study talking about what scripture says and what scripture seems to say. But first, starting with the principles about truth and lie. And I think in this video we will end those principles, that, that, that foundation, and then we will continue with applying these principles to studying of scripture because that's what it's all about to know god and his genius plan so his plan of salvation so we will finish it uh today and today also we will start uh, applying these principles to scripture in general to study studying of scripture also there i'm going to make a division between two types of people so let's switch to the slides and this was the last one and we have seen that we are true to our heart if we love ourselves that's that's the cause the relative cause and these are the situations as an example examples of doing things or pursuing things if you love yourself these things you will pursue as an example again and again if you are true uh, to ourselves then if we are true to ourselves then we stand in the truth that is the that is the common denominator even if we would tell a lie in order to remain honest in our heart that's the point to remain in congruence with our heart okay so let's take a look at two the two well-known examples i've been through them uh, more than once so let's take a look quickly the principle of law law is good in itself but it's failing because of the flesh we know that already remember law is the surface it's the commandment you shall do but it's not from the inside out that's the point it's it's about external coercion yeah you must comply as it assumes short-term results there you have it again the law assumes short-term results because you want to do something and in the short term you have complied oh you are so proud of yourself that's what's happening but it's not about the short term never it's always about the long term that's the point and the result is it stimulates or even produces more offense more sin more transgressions so that is the result of law and we know that from john sorry uh from romans 5 verse 20 we know that already but we also know why god did it right read romans 5 20. law distrust the other if you uh, are educating your child with law oh boy you distrust them you don't you cannot trust them to go by themselves to a party as an example oh that's terrible that's terrible and law races like a strict child escort we can read about that in galatians 3 i think where it talks about the fact that the law was an escort to Christ. That's the point. And also, the principle of law is uh, congruent with our natural human tendency. Did you know that? It is. Because our natural human tendency is always to have a, our kind of righteousness. It's always to have a pat on the, on the shoulder or the back, like you have done a great job. On the short term, you get some compliments and you think you are all that. That's what law is. 
if you complied once, you think, oh man, I've done it. But tomorrow or the next hour, you didn't comply, as an example. So that's how law works. It fails all the time because of our flesh, because of our mortal bodies, our mortality. That's the reason why the law fails. We cannot do the law ever. So what is the law opposite to? Of course, the principle of grace. Of course. So you know that grace is unmerited favor, right? It's a gift and it is unmerited, unearned. You cannot earn it. There are no conditions in order to receive grace. You just get it. You just get it. You didn't ask for it, but you get it. And that's always unconditionally, always. That's what God is. God is love and grace is the highest outcome in that sense of love, of God's love. So the realization of grace, the awareness, the true awareness of grace makes joyous. True, it makes grateful and thankful and that makes joyous. Grace also assumes long-term results, always, always. Grace trusts the other, so you better educate your child in grace than in, uh, than in law. But of course, when, it, when your child is very uh, little, like two years, three years, then you have to use law. And then when they start to understand things better, then you gradually shift to grace. Very important. Grace educates with responsibility. It stimulates ownership. That means it stimulates leadership. That's what grace does. So the outcome of grace is genuinely being truthful to oneself from the inside out. Can you see it now better, hopefully? And the consequence of grace is the tendency to offense less and less and less. That's the total opposite of law because that produces more and more offense. While grace, and it, it, it works counterintuitively because it is counter, um, a counterbalanced compared to the human, the natural human tendency. It works counterintuitively, grace. But if you do it, you will see that the tendency uh, becomes to offense less and less, to sin less and less. Interesting, right? But that's how it works. That's why people who, whom I tell about grace, the first reaction is always, or in most of the cases, oh, I can sin as much as I want. And then I tell them, yes, of course, you can. Yes, sin, sin your heart out. Of course. Why? Because I know that if they understand grace, truly are becoming aware of grace, that means faith, because it's faith that accords with grace, remember? So if they receive faith from God, to really see and realize grace, then of course they will become grateful and become joyous and that means that they will sin less and less and less. That's the point. That's how grace works. Interesting. So the last slide for, the, for this um, foundation, foundational principle, so, as the last lessons learned, let's go through law. That leads to a dead end because of the flesh, obviously. So, law will always be a failure as long as it must be kept through the flesh with our mortal bodies. It will always be a failure. If the trigger is external, 
then it's a lost cause already because it doesn't come from the inside out to have to follow external rules causes fear to thrive did you know that of course you know that if you have external rules and you are not allowed to to deviate from from that that straight line then you will deviate because of fear of fear to make a mistake so you will step beside that straight line that's how law works it causes fear to thrive and the short term fear generated focus guarantees the lie it guarantees that you will stand in the lie you will live a lie and not the truth that is the point so please be far from law and as close as possible to grace that is the only and right way to go of course so awareness of grace through faith obviously only f only god can give faith of course that stimulates gratitude and gratitude sparks joy and joy brings freedom true freedom and keeps our eyes on christ and what's to come our great expectation so this total awareness makes us remain in the truth because that is the most um the most uh, uh, what is the word um you have the most freedom there and even if you see perceived risks they are also uh, able to calculate them so stand in the freedom total freedom and you will see how good that will feel feel but in the beginning it will feel strange that's true so this is the groundwork and then we will go to scripture so we will now apply these principles to scripture study okay let's read studying scripture can be done with two possible mindsets there you there you have the two types of people the first one a people who pursue what scripture actually says no matter the consequences and you have the other group people who confirm their own traditional ideas by twisting scripture caused by fear fear to be left alone by friends fear to be abandoned by your family as an example fear will confirm your traditional ideas and then you will twist the truth of scripture that's what happens so these are the two flavors these are the two mindsets and of course there are variations but these are the two main mindsets uh with with what people can study scripture case case a someone in that case someone is taking their authenticity who they are who they really are as point of departure so they have the freedom to want to know the truth without being limited why freedom why freedom of course it's the freedom to only focus on the truth without being fearful for any consequences uh, of family abandoning you or friends abandoning you or you getting a bad reputation in church etc etc you are not fearful of those consequences the only thing that interests you and it, you are focused on is finding the truth and pursuing the truth that's the freedom i'm talking about here in case b it's the other way around it's someone taking their real their current relationships and who they want to be not loving themselves as point of departure 
So fear of losing out, fear of being abandoned, that keeps them from leaving their generally accepted doctrines that everyone accepts in church, as an example. And they are fearful to abandon those because they will be pushed away. And they don't want that. You see the point. And that's the pain of discipline in the short term. But they don't want that. Okay. We continue. So again, the, the same two questions are valid here. Are you true to yourself? Congruent with your heart? Are you honest to yourself? Or are you lying to yourself and going against your heart and betraying yourself? Do you choose for development in truth only, no matter what the consequences are? Or do you choose for your safe circle of friends over truth at the expense of truth? Are you going for the short-term pain of discipline that will yield huge long-term benefits? Or are you going for short-term pleasure like friends, money, power and reputation yielding huge long-term damages? These are the questions that are valid right here, right now. And these questions are, of course, relative. So from the human point of view. So again, I'm going to use a well-known slide uh, where I explain a well-known principle, the confrontation matrix. When people are being confronted, they are on a crossroads in their life, especially leaders, crossroads in their life, and they are being confronted with truth. They are, as an example, in religion, that is the lie, and they are confronted with truth. What do you do? What do you do? Are you going for the short-term benefits that last only a short time? So retention of reputation, friends, income, power, etc. Or, but on the long term, you will have loss of Ionian life. That's very long and very glorious. You have loss of that. And the last judgment before the great white throne awaits you. That is if you would choose for the lie, for the religion. But if you would choose for the truth, then you will have long-term benefits that last a very long term, a uh, long time. And you, on the short term, you will have loss of reputation, friends, income, power, etc. On the one hand, on the short term, yes, the pain of discipline. But on the long term, you will uh, receive Ionian life with great glory. And you will have no judgment or condemnation whatsoever, but blessings. What is it going to be? So I will stop this video at this slide and the next video I will then continue our journey and now by applying further and further these principles into the studying of scripture. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time.